You know, William Blake, in my opinion, coined a term that, or I'm not sure if he coined it, but I just love this term that he said. He said, organ perception. He says that he doesn't obey organ perception. And it's the same thing that Neville says when he talks about the senses. But when you think of them truly as organs, and if you obey what your organs see and hear, um, you're going to always be desiring because you're never going to really see what you want to see. And you're never really feeling like your your stomach is always hungry. No matter how much food you give it, it just becomes hungry again. And these organs are addressed in the scriptures. It's, you know, the, I'm the bread of life. Those who are like, I'm the living water. Those who, you know, drink the water that I give them, you know, they'll never thirst again. These organs become fulfilled. And so so it's Christ who fulfills these uh, cries of the organs, right? Our hearts never want to be broken again. Our um, ears want to hear good news. Our eyes want to see what we want to see. And we, our stomachs want to be fed and we want to be uh, satisfied. And every organ, we gave them the gift of language and they speak to us. And some scream louder than others and we try to fulfill these organs. But we try to fulfill them with outer means. And we when you do that, you seem to run into a loop. You find yourself acting like the organs. You always, uh, you're hungry and you know, you're, you know when you eat, you're going to be hungry again. You never really feel satisfied because you are connected. Your, your sense of self is connected to your organs. And when William Blake says he doesn't obey organ perception... I I am trying to get you to see that when he says that, he is being literal, like he's absolutely being 100% serious. He doesn't obey his organs. He sees them as windows. So the outer world that we're in, when you see a window, you, you can see your eyes. So you can uh, make things, you can attribute human qualities to these objects, and we can see ourselves in these objects, and then we can see how life is really a reflection of us. And by us, I don't mean our bodies. I mean the man within, you. When I make these videos, I try to poke you. I sh try to shake you from your sleep. I, when I say the words, stop desiring, what tends to happen is the organs or the, the mortal ears, when they hear that, uh, and that those words travel down to the stomach, the stomach almost replies with, what do you mean I'm not, not going to desire? You're going to tell me I'm not going to eat food? You're going to tell me I'm not going to eat anymore? How, how can I not... Uh, be hungry again. What do you mean? You know, this is um, this is why Christ doesn't make sense to people because they're trying to talk with their organs. They're, they they don't allow these words to penetrate within them. Within them, they just hit the organs and bounce off, and just reflect back or they react back. But what I'm trying to speak, who I'm trying to speak to, is the inner man. So when I say stop desiring, I am speaking to the inner man to stop desiring. And it makes so much more sense when you see it that way. You can get that moment where you understand what's being said. That is the inner man listening. You're no longer listening with your organs. You're no longer observing with your eyes. And I know this is very this is, sounds surreal, um, which in a in a way I I love surrealism as as my favorite art form. If you can't tell by my thumbnails, and I actually do surrealism myself. It's because I want to try to convey a message through images. Sometimes speaking is not enough. Because speaking, can I can inspire you. I can um, teach you what I know by my language, but images can provide a certain feeling that I'm trying to convey. Um, and that can penetrate deeper than just words. So there's, there's, or I should say, there's different variations of penetrating the mind with the same idea, uh, given in word form, you know, uh, writing form or uh, art form or image form. So there's all these different types of forms that I try to convey with my with the paintings I choose. I try to establish a feeling in the painting. And I'm trying to establish that for the inner man, for you, not the organs again. And I'm going to keep repeating this because I I think in it, this has to be understood when Neville says that he doesn't obey his senses or he has he dies to himself and he resurrects to something new. These ideas sound ludicrous to the outer man. If the outer man were to hear this message, they would not understand it on any level. And I don't mean human being. I mean the the idea that man thinks he's his, his organs. He will react very badly to this message. It won't make sense um, when Christ says, 
don't say it's four four months until harvest. Look within and see that the harvest is already ripe or open your eyes. Stop being blind. Well, if I said that to you, you would say, well, what are you talking about? I'm, I can see with my eyes. I would tell you to stop being hungry. It, your stomach replies with, what are you talking about? Uh, I try to tell you some good news and you're like, no, absolutely not. That doesn't make, that doesn't, that's not logical. So the ears reject it. But again, it's these organs that we're dealing with. They're not evil. They just need to be satisfied. Uh, you can almost talk to your own, you can talk to yourself in a way. You can ask what it is that each organ's afraid of and you'll find it responds with something. And just listen and then fulfill it. Know that it will be fulfilled. Um, but that's just like a, a certain way I'm trying to convey a certain idea um, that the idea of stop desiring is not to tell you that you shouldn't want anything in life. I'm not telling you that you're not allowed to I mean, you shouldn't even allow me to ever tell you that anyways. But you shouldn't, staying in desire doesn't get you to what you want. So it's, it, that, is, that isn't logical either. It doesn't make any sense to desire. It almost doesn't make sense. Certain desires can propel us and they can direct us. But continuously remaining there, I don't see how it aids us in any way. We have to learn to start being fulfilled. I don't mean the organs. I mean our, our inner selves. We have to start walking around in our imaginations feeling fulfilled. So when I say stop desiring, again, I'm speaking to your immortal ears. I'm speaking to the ears that are invisible, to the eyes that are invisible, the ones that can you can close these organs and yet you can still see. Um, you can still hear. You're not gone yet. And you don't need a sense any kind of one of the five senses, you don't need one of them or any of them to assume something about yourself. You don't need one. And you also don't need any reason to believe it. So you can learn to eliminate these obstacles that you've created for yourself. You don't need a reason because you're still in desire. You still need a reason. You don't need one anyways to believe something. Again, you don't need a sense to assume something. Once you allow yourself that freedom, the freedom to assume and the freedom to believe, I'm talking to you, the inner man, then you can actually start seeing what you want to see. You can stop being blind. You can start seeing the right, the ripe harvest. You can start hearing the news you want to hear. Um, in this message, the devil gives is good news. It really is wonderful news. And the crux of it all is this, that God dreamt to be man in hopes that man may dream to be God. And I want, and just take that, what I just said, and just think about that for the next year. Just think about it. Really try to understand what's being said there. Because when you take the time to really chew on it, to chew on the idea, you can extract more from it. Because I didn't come to these ideas overnight. I really took whatever freed me that Neville said, that I felt that, um, opening inside me. I really wanted to understand what was being said. I took maybe a month or two just just thinking about that and trying to find different ways to say it that makes sense to me and try to um, feel that feeling of that freedom and try to label it something that I could understand. And the more you do that, the more you will get his message and why I guess I do speak about the promise more, why I'm so interested in it because I find it to be way more freeing than trying to figure out how to get the next item. I don't find that to be fulfilling. I don't think I've ever had a thing in my life that really fulfilled me f that long. I think I became hungry again. But what I'm learning is the art of not desiring inside myself. And it's open to everybody that this message is for everyone to practice. It's a different way of using the imagination. We can spend our times using our imaginations to judge after good and evil, to wonder whether it's right or wrong, and to really argue with ourselves. But I, I find feasting upon a new tree, a new fruit, really it's not new, it's been said before, but the idea of feasting on fulfillment, then I think that if you can learn to change the imagining inside, you will create a better life within yourself and that will express itself externally. Now that's in the baseline. 
But when I spoke about the dream that I had about the light, that light is not here. The, the light that Neville was staring at, it's not here to create another ism or another religion. It's not here to demand, a, <laughs> it's not here to create a political uh, movement. It's here to transform you from the inside out, to make the man of death into a life-giving spirit. That is the that is the promise that Neville speaks about, and I can't help but feel so interested in it. And I find myself I found myself very bored with hearing about his message about the law when I would read him, and I was curious because I didn't quite understand him when he would speak about this light. I, I couldn't visualize it; I didn't understand what he meant. But now I really feel like I do get what he is saying. And it is a wonderful message that the light, the cause that you're looking for is not outside of you. You know, everyone thinks that there's a God outside of them that is watching them, that is critiquing their gestures and seeing what foods they put in their mouth. (laughs) And it tells you that it's not what goes into a man that defiles him, but what comes out of him. Because what comes out of him comes from his mind. It's not what goes into a man. So it's not about the outside. So if if you're shaming yourself for what you've done in the sense world, uh, you're wasting your time. You're you're not even judged by your appearances. God doesn't judge after appearances, so he doesn't look at the execution of the act. He sees what happened inside. That's why you can't mock him. People think that they can lie to to someone, but you can you cannot lie to God, or else you're proclaiming that God can be mocked, and that makes no sense. So, this idea of this outside being, this outside God. Truly, when I say the word God, you cannot think of something outside of yourself, as Neville said. You know, when I was younger, I went to Mass, um, and <laughs> there, was no, there was no seating in the pews, so I had to stand. And I'm standing there, and I remember, I'm not sure who told me, but someone told me that if you get on your knees, uh, it's more of, uh, you're kind of suffering for Christ, your knees will start to, you'll start to feel the pains that he felt when he was, um, the, you know, Catholics love this imagery of Christ being flogged. I, I don't know why, but they do, obviously. But in this case, they're telling me that if I felt the pain on my knees, then I'm sort of more connected to Christ. So I connect to Christ through suffering is what I was taught. And I remember really feeling the pain in my knees when I was doing it. And I, I realized I couldn't help but feel like, well, I hope this God's watching because this hurts. You know, I hope he repays me. If he doesn't repay me with money, then I would hope he repays me with something because I'm not, I don't, I don't want to do this for free. I don't really like it. And I wouldn't understand why I'm doing it. Um, <laughs> but I really thought that if I did that, I would gain some type of merit. I would, um, he would look at me like I'm a good boy. You know, he would tap my head and tell me, good job. I was looking for that by doing that. And I see now how silly it is. But at the time, I didn't. And now that I, I see it's silly because I find God within. I, it, it's not on the outside to be worshipped. It says, make no images of me. And then what do we do? We make a bunch of images of this being. It says, make no images of me. So he doesn't have an image um, on the outside. He's all within. It is all within us. That light, I did not find it outside of me. It is within me and it's within you. It's within every single person. Um, But if I'm speaking to your organs, it makes no sense. Because when you close your eyes, you see darkness. But inside myself in this dream, there was a bright light. And it, again, it it grabbed Neville's attention. And I, I know that in the end, I'm the dreamer of all of this drama. But... Again, I need to share this message. I think it needs to be told that the organs that you obey every single day and the judgments that you carry with you, you're going to eventually have to shed them like a snake with its skin. Because the pearl of great price asks for everything of you. And we hold on, we come up to the merchant who's trying to sell us this pearl and we're clutching our judgments and our prejudices. And we're clutching them. And so how much is it? And he says, all of it. It's cost every single prejudice. It costs every judgment of yourself. It costs everything. 
and we think that's too much of a price. So we turn away. We say, no, it's too expensive. It's way too expensive. We might even, you know, meet with some other people and say, could you believe that the guy's charging that for the price of that pearl? You know, it's probably a crappy pearl anyways. And we come up with these reasons on why we justify our, why we hold on to our prejudices and our judgments and why we hold on to this false God on the outside. We think that if we judge a certain way, think a certain way, feel a certain way, then this God will thank us. This God will feel worshipped. But again, God is not on the outside. There is no God on the outside to worship. So then what do we do? Well, it tells us to worship Him with thanksgiving, to really feel thankful that we have, to feel fulfilled. We obey His commandments. And what does He say? To not obey your, sen- your, your senses or your organs and see that your harvest is ripe. Actually, he says the word, see it. You know, and again, in Isaiah, it says, I will make something new. Don't think about the past. I'm going to make something new. Do you see it? Well, if, my, if I obey my organs, of course I don't see it. If I listen to my stomach, of course I'm going to always desire food. But I'm not speaking to your outer self. I'm trying to awake again. I'm trying to shake you as the way Neville shook me. And I understood his message. I didn't quite understand him again. I didn't really get what he was saying. But then I, I did. And then I wondered, like, am I going crazy? And I think it's okay. I'm totally fine with people thinking that. I have no problem with it. Because I feel so at peace right now. I feel like I'm understanding his spiritual message. And I think that's what I wanted more than his message on the law. And I'm receiving what I want. So I don't feel, I feel okay. Because it, whether or not someone thinks I'm crazy, it doesn't stop me from being fulfilled. It doesn't stop me. Again, they might, I have, might even have people tell me that I'm crazy. Well, if, that's, if my ears are hit, hearing that, I don't have to hear that with my inner ears. I'm allowed to feel and create what I want to create. I don't have to feel like my mind's hijacked. And I don't have to feel like I'm being told what to desire and what to think. It's all my choosing within me. I don't have to have the same thoughts and the same reactions as my parents or anyone around me. I don't have to. And I don't have to tell anyone anything because God doesn't speak. He doesn't, he doesn't, sorry, he doesn't want me to speak with my lips when I pray. That's what a heathen is. A heathen is somebody who thinks of a God outside of them. And they will, they will, they will use their mouth and speak so loudly, hoping that that God's listening to the to the words they're saying, like they'll craft these beautiful words and messages and they hope this God's listening. Or they give to the needy in hopes this God watches. Um, I've done that before. I've given to people in hopes that the, um, the God that I was taught to believe in as a child watched me and saw it and said, oh, he did a good deed today. But I didn't realize that this whole drama is taking within ourselves. It's something that it's it again it is an instrument it's something that you're going to learn how to play learn how to fulfill yourself learn how to feel fulfilled learn how to stop desiring stop sinning and start hitting your marks inside and have faith in that you hit your mark learn the art of faith don't dismiss this message as being crazy really try to utilize this instrument called the imagination it is a power as well it's a light but it also is a power for us to curse or bless um but Learn to be fulfilled instead. Um, Take this message to heart. You, the inner man, really learn to stop desiring in in, in there. And I think that this message, at least it it hit me. It really opened me up to a world within myself that I didn't know I had. And it brought me into a place where I felt like I could finally rest. And I have no problem sharing that to people. I have no problem wanting to express that, that I, through Neville's work, found something worth sharing. And I go within myself, and then I come back here to tell you, and whether I'm believed or not, um, I guess it doesn't really matter, because it's my experience. I'm still going to rest here. And I've had just... And I'm going to share more dreams that I've had of him that I had a few years ago that really opened me up, that... I can see why now I'm, I guess I should just share it. I can see why I'm teaching this now. About two years ago, I had a dream where I was in a um, auditorium, or I was outside of this auditorium and I could hear Neville teaching, but I wasn't in the auditorium. 
And I, I ended up trying to find, um, I was going through the hallways. It kind of felt like a school. And I ended up finding this auditorium. I ended up finding Neville speaking. And I went in there and I sat down. And I was kind of coming to the end of his lecture. And he wanted us to interpret, I think it was like Mark chapter 5 or something, and from the Bible. And we all pulled out our Bibles. For, and my seat ended up having one. And it was open to Mark chapter 5, and he was going around asking, what's your guys' interpretation? He was looking for a specific answer. And some people, the, the answers they would give, he would say, oh, no, not that. Like, And he went to somebody else and he'd say, oh, no, not that. And then we had a moment where we, everyone was just, because what he was trying to do was trying to find someone who can interpret this to be a student of his. And we all shot our hands up. And I remember hearing somebody in the audience saying, like, I'm going to imagine winning. I remember hearing their thoughts. And I remember I raised, I rose my hand up and there was maybe like five around me and he called on me to give a response, but I didn't read the book. I didn't read Mark chapter five, but I ended up just looking down. I was able to piece together. It was weird. It was like set up in a way where it was like Christ is the king and David is the king. It was like kind of going like Christ and David, like, and I could just see that they were all the same being, they were the same character. And when I said, oh, well, uh, Jesus is David. They're the same, and then he got really close to my face, like he that he like he heard the interpretation he wanted. And to be honest with you, I don't really know why that was the interpretation he wanted, but that regardless, he he seemed to like that answer, and he was staring at me, and I kind of saw his. I could see his face quite clearly, actually, and he ended up uh, accepting the answer. So he told me to rise, and. He told me he told me to get behind him in a way, like I kind of got behind him. And when I was walking behind him, I heard a lot of people moaning and groaning like they didn't like or I heard some people they didn't like that I was picked. Um, but regardless, he had me sit behind him and he started writing on a chalkboard like each month. It was like every month he was writing like a number was growing every month. It was like a, a, a number just kept growing. And I sat down behind him and I looked at his back and his back was really sweaty. It was like. I don't know, he looked like he was ill almost, like he was going to leave soon. And I could feel that. And then um, I looked down at my hands and then the dream ended. And that was a few years ago. And I wasn't talking about this stuff because I didn't feel like I really understood his spiritual message. Or at least I didn't feel confident in it to speak about it. But now I'm at a point where I've had s several dreams after that that have really where they were really strong experiences compared to this world and they changed my attitude and I could it, and it really lined up with what he was saying like he would say if you start doing this then you are most likely going to have this type of dream and then I would have it and it was really weird it really sh it really kind of freaked me out to be honest and then I really started to believe his more spiritual talks because of these dreams so I didn't dismiss my dreams. They're not normal dreams. They're not like a dream where you feel like you just jumped on a roller coaster and you're just kind of midway on it and you don't really have any uh, autonomy. You can't really, you're just sort of on the ride. This is different. This is like a dream where, I don't even know if I would say it's completely lucid because it's like in the middle. It's like I am aware of what's going on, but I'm also on the ride. I'm going along with it. And I that dream is the reason why I'm even talking today because I felt chosen. And I th and, it, and then Neville says that in one of his lectures, he says to feel chosen. So he wants everyone to feel chosen. And I remember I felt it. And I had that dream. And that is not just available to me. Anybody can feel chosen. That's the good news. I would, I would truly walk around feeling chosen. Don't worry about what you're chosen for. Just feel chosen. It's, it's a good feeling. It feels that you feel important. You feel like you're supposed to do something. Um, and in this case, I feel like I'm supposed to talk about this. I enjoy it. Um, I feel it ignites me after. I almost I feel energized when I speak about this. And I know it sounds surreal, and I know it can sound crazy to the organs, but um, I hope this message reaches you, the deeper you, the, the inner self, the one that you can't see. You know you're there. The awareness that I'm speaking to, the one who imagines, the dreamer, the, the thinker, the one who isn't the thought but thinking the thought. That's the one I want to talk to. I'm interested in him or her or them. Whoever. It's, it's a spirit. I'm interested in the spirit of you. And 
I think it's asleep. I think we're, we are asleep in a way. And we need to wake ourselves up and truly see that the harvest is ripe. And pra- that's the practice of it. But the awakening that Neville speaks about, I think is, it's even deeper than the dream I recently had. I think, it's even, I think it even goes deeper than that. I think there are way more levels to this that are deeper that I don't know if I fully have reached yet, but I know that the, you're on the right path. At least I feel like I'm on the right path. Um, I feel like I'm on the same path as he was on, but I, I feel like it goes deeper. And I think that if you listen to this message and you've made it this far, I think you're somebody who questions. I think you're somebody who is interested in maybe you saw through all these gods or maybe you're seeing that you're not all these things you've claimed to be or you see that you have, you're not your beliefs, right? You've had so many beliefs now and you know you're not them. You're not your thoughts. You know you're not, like you're, you feel like you're maybe removing the, uh, the clothing, the articles of clothing of beliefs that you've held on to yourself and you might not, you might see through that it's not about just gaining items. It's, there's something deeper to life and I think that you're more of a seeker. You want, to understand and again if you've made it this far i think you are interested in neville's spiritual teachings i would take um i would take some time and really meditate on the things you don't understand about what he is saying because if you take the time to understand what his spiritual talks are saying i i believe that you'll get big if you accept them if you don't judge him um, based on his time or his ego, if you just accept what he is saying, that God dreamt to be man and hopes that man may dream to be God, um, if you take that and just really chew on it, I think you're going to be given a peace that you're not going to be able to find in the things of the world. It's a peace that you can't lose because it was never outside of you. You can't drop it. So... I hope that you take the time to take it seriously, the message that he gave over and over again for years, and try to understand it. And I'm going to speak about how I see these teachings and and the experiences I've had with them. And Neville, given his experience, really helped me So I'm sure that if I give my experiences with this, it will help you as well. And this is an inner journey. It's not, if I said that you're going to awake, you would say, what do you mean I'm I'm awake right now listening to you speak? Of course I'm awake. I'm not sleeping. But we are. Spiritually, we're sleeping. And we will awake. That's the promise. We will awake. It will happen to everyone. And this message of awakening happens from the inside out so we don't wait upon a god to arouse us we don't wake up wait upon that we it happens from within and i hope you can take this message as good news and set your hope upon that and feel that it will be fulfilled that you will awake and you will understand neville's message much more clearly it will become clear to you you'll be able to see with the the true eyes, the immortal eyes of what he is saying. And you'll have the experiences similar to him. And because I know I have. And so I hope that this message truly reaches you and that um, you really obtain that peace.